Hey patrons, Seth here with a Guam update. If you've watched the last video, kind of made a little post about how I'm with the Air Force Reserves in the Pacific right now at uh, operating out of Guam. I did a flight uh, a few days ago and I did some editing to it. It's about a 20 minute flight and I'm kind of going to do a voiceover because I can't plug in to the... Uh, the aircraft's uh, equipment to record the audio in flight like I would like to, uh, but I don't have the capability of doing that right now. I'm working on it, see if I can get that approved and everything. Uh, but for now, it's just a video. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I'd share it with you. We're actually going to an airport called uh, Northfield. We call it Baker LZ, and it's the airport that the Enola Gay and Boxcar used in uh, uh, World War II on their nuclear missions. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, hope you enjoy. And uh, send me an email or feedback. Let me know what you think about this content, if uh, you like this sort of thing. As soon as I get back to the States, I'm going to go back into uh, the kind of the four flight tutorials and, and giving that uh, usual content that you probably follow me for. Uh, I'll get back to work on that in March. So thanks for watching. See you later. All right, so here we are taking off out of uh, Guam. This is Anderson Air Force Base. It's at the north tip of the island. Uh, island of Guam. This is my takeoff. Uh, standard takeoff. We're actually empty now and we're headed to uh, Saipan. You'll see um, our flight plan will pop up here after we get airborne. Uh, I'm in the right seat again as an instructor. Uh, the pilot I'm flying with, she is also an instructor, uh, but she is non-current for her unimproved landing and takeoff event. So we're having to do that by landing at North uh, Northfield or Baker LZ. That's a semi-prepared surface, and that's actually a qualification that we have to do uh, on a periodic basis. So I'm current as an instructor and helping her get recurrent. So I speed things up here. Uh, we're just climbing out up to a bit, about uh, 9,000 feet, I think. And you can see our route of flight there takes us right over Rhoda. Uh, and then Tinian, the island of Tinian, which you'll see here momentarily. And then finally Saipan. So the, the Marianas Islands are, are kind of a chain of islands that... Guam is the largest, uh, and, and Guam is a territory. The other islands are actually just, I uh, uh, forget what you call it, like commonwealths of the U.S., but they're still part of the U.S. technically. Uh, so there's Goat Island. It's a little uninhabited island. We'll actually fly a little bit lower over that here momentarily. Up here in the distance, uh, you can see the island of Tinian. This is not also, uh, this is where a lot of the bombers were based during World War II, a lot of the B-29s. So you'll see the big airport there, it's pretty obvious, and then you'll see a much smaller one that we crossed directly over. If you pause just the right time, you can see a C-130 on approach there. But there's North Island, we just flew it over, flew over it there. And I turned and we're on final for Saipan. So you can see the island of Saipan's very close to Tinian. Uh, I think they're only about 10 miles away. So this is my landing, it's, it's pretty uneventful. Uh, Notice kind of the control movements. This is something that I don't pay attention to when I'm flying because it's just automatic. Uh, but watching the video, it's kind of interesting. It almost looks like a, maybe I'm in a little bit of a PIO, but I think it's really just what it takes to land the Herc because the flight controls are so heavy. They're hydraulically boosted. This is really gusty conditions. Uh, it's hard to tell because there's not a lot of trees blowing around, but uh, trying to keep this thing on center line. Um, when in gusty conditions takes a lot of control movement uh, anyway this is an uneventful landing and we taxi over to the ramp now this is an international airport uh, and we're not do going to a normal gate we're going to like kind of an empty spot on the ramp and we're going to leave our engines running and we're going to unload a, a big forklift um, this is an all-terrain forklift that we're loading up that's going to work the rest of the, the next couple of weeks there at Baker LZ uh, loading and unloading and offloading cargo from our planes. So uh, we're coordinating with ground right now, letting them know that you know we're going to go over to this parking spot, do an ERO. ERO is just an acronym for engine running offload, uh, or in this case, engine running onload. Uh, so right here, I explain things. Hey there, Patreon. Seth here. Uh, I'm on the ground in Saipan. Give you a look around. We're doing an engine running onload of that uh, forklift right there. I've got a time lapse set up in the back so you'll see um, the whole process of this onload using the, the ramp and door in the back there. So we're going to drive that uh, big forklift onto the plane. You can see right now they're doing some disassembly. They're taking off 
uh, that whatever that post little crane thing is off the top. Uh, they've already taken the cab off, and the cab uh, they've put on a uh, on a pallet that they're gonna load up. So enjoy. All right, so here you can see that pallet I was talking about the the cab where the operator sits is that's on the pallet there right there and it's just a it covers up his seat so when he pulls up to the back of the plane he doesn't get blasted with our, our prop blast uh, so in this case our engines are running you'll see the forklift approach and everybody's wearing eye protection so when you don't have the cab on you've got to wear these goggles that kind of protect your uh, face from the the prop blast and you can see we're driving on. We're using a lot of hand coordination and uh, and briefings to make sure that uh, we don't damage anything in the plane because it's, it's very easily uh, done because that, that uh, forklift's so big. So here, my uh, flight plan from uh, Saipan over to Baker, that's the closed runway. If you look on a, a sectional, you can see that it's a closed runway on the north side of Tinian. Uh, so very short flight. We're doing our checklist here. We've actually been on the ground for about two hours, and uh, we've completed a bunch of briefings, and we've looked at our takeoff and landing data very closely because this is a, a 3,700-foot surveyed runway. The actual runway is a lot longer than that, but the surveyed piece that we're allowed to use is only 3,700 feet. Um, so we, we need about um, 3,900 feet with this big forklift. Um, so it's very... Uh, close. We're within 200 feet of our required runway distance. Uh, so we were, we were looking at all that very carefully, and it's going to be her takeoff. Uh, what we're going to do is basically make a left-hand turn. We're talking to um, Saipan Tower, and basically as soon as we turn, we're going to make two kind of a big left-hand turn, and we're in the downwind uh, for Baker LZ. So as soon as I get the gear up, I'm immediately switching over to a frequency at Baker LZ and talking to the controller there. Now, of course, it's not towered, uh, but it has a kind of a combat control person on the ground. And it's really, it's actually a, another C-130 pilot that's assigned to a ground unit. He's got a big uh, handheld radio with a big antenna, you know, sticking up, and he's talking to us from the ground there. So he is the one that's actually giving us clearance to land. Uh and here we are in the left downwind. We'll make the turn, and you'll see uh, Baker right there as we approach. It's pretty narrow. Uh, there's a lot of overgrowth. The trees have kind of kind of grown up very close to the sides of the runway. Uh, and this is actually made of coral. You can see the part that we're going over right now is a lot narrower. And then they've mowed out uh, a wider spot. I don't know exactly how long this was during World War II. Uh, but I, I think it was probably eight or nine thousand feet long at least and it's made of this coral very sharp coral It's rough on the tires um, And with all the cracks and grass uh, coming up we kind of had some uh, some tire slippage on the uh, On the braking action so you can see we use uh, The majority of the runway uh, We're we're not braking as hard as we could have so we're kind of going easy on the brakes you can see those orange markers there. That marks the end of the usable zone. And we stop right here. We're going to do a briefing. We actually open up the ramp and door, and we're going to reverse taxi. So we're going to use reverse thrust out of the propellers. Uh, I open my window there to make sure the plane's depressurized. We open the ramp and door, and the loadmaster is going to look behind because we don't have mirrors. So he's acting as like a, a human uh, backup camera. Um, and we're just... Uh, verbally communicating that it's clear and he's backing us all the way up to the loading team that's going to offload the forklift so you can see now we're driving the forklift off and now the the back of the plane is configured with a flat floor surface right now so once this forklift gets off the plane you'll see everybody starts to uh, do something to the floor and what we're doing is we're flipping over uh, these uh, these strips of the floor that have rollers on the backside. So once we strip those over, see there they go with the rollers. Now this pallet is able to just roll freely off the back of the plane and you can just see the forklift back there because of the white balance. It, you, it's kind of invisible, but what we're going to do is push that pallet off and it'll just land on the on the forklift and then the, the forklift will come back. They'll put the cab on and, and we're good to go. So again, about an hour later, we're done with all that. 
uh, we're doing the rest of our briefings. We are going to back up more to make sure we use the entire runway available. So we're doing basically a short field takeoff. You can see the load team there to the left. Uh, so we're backing up to, to maximize the runway that we have available. And then here's going to be our flight path uh, around Tinian and Goat Island. So this is going to be pretty cool to, to see this. Uh, this is, again, going to be her takeoff. This is their, her last piece that, you know, she did her short field landing in there. Now she's doing her short field takeoff. Uh, so she's holding the brakes, going to go full power. I'm going to check to make sure we're, we're making our calculated full power. And then I'm going to hack a stopwatch. And what I'm looking for is we need 80 knots in 13 seconds. So as soon as she released the brakes, uh, with my right hand, I start the clock. Now I can see a timer running in the heads-up display there. Uh, as soon as I see 13 seconds, I'm going to call out time. And she's going to either continue or abort the takeoff. And so when I yell time, we're at 80 knots. Uh, so she continues the takeoff and we do the normal rotation right there, get the gear tracking up. You can see we've got plenty of kind of surface in front of us and there's the orange markers for the end of the zone. So we were much lighter taking off out of here. So we didn't, we only used about 1700 foot uh, ground roll taking off. Uh, so it was an uneventful takeoff. That's always good. Um, so I, I switched to the nose camera because the footage right here, we're climbing up to talk to Saipan Tower to make sure the both Tinian and Saipan traffic patterns are clear. Uh, once we verify there's no traffic there, uh, we make a right-hand turn and we actually descend down to about 500 feet and we kind of fly along the coastline uh, to get a better view of the islands. You can see why these islands are such a popular vacation destination for uh, people in Asia because it's close to Asia and they're just gorgeous. Uh, there's really just beautiful blue waters, uh, great scuba diving and stuff. It's it's a really a great place to go. Here's Goat Island right here. Uh, still haven't seen any goats there, but uh, maybe if you slow the footage down, you could help me look. Um, I'm not sure why it's called Goat Island. That's just what it's called. Uh, I think it's called something else on the sectional actually. Anyway, I take over flying here. I just keep it at 500 feet above the water, and uh, we're going to fly to Rota. It's a pretty quick trip. It's only about um, a 15-minute flight, and we're just staying down low, uh, mainly because it's a little more interesting than flying up higher, uh, and it's also just practicing flying at those low levels. That's that's where the, the C-130 is meant to fly. Uh, at any rate, once we pick up the island of Rota there, uh, you'll see this nose camera actually dies before I finish my little tour around the island. Um, so you miss some of the, the pretty parts there. Uh, but a real beautiful island there. Then I climb up to about 5,000 feet and we're basically on uh, downwind into uh, Anderson Air Force Base. The weather was actually good enough today where uh, I just did a visual um, visual approach we're kind of in the clouds right here we get vectored down just below them and uh, i pick up the visual and land on runway six right pretty uneventful um, landing you'll see me make here not quite as interesting without the nose cam but uh, i've got more gopros that i'm gonna i've got a couple more days of footage to edit and you'll be seeing that here shortly in the future but uh here's the approach in here now right where it goes to normal speed this is kind of uh, our last checks we're doing safety checks uh, and then stabilized approach criteria, making sure that's all met, and there's some call-outs. Uh, we're also getting um, a terrain warning here. Our, our computer actually kind of malfunctioned, and it was telling us, it was warning us that terrain was, uh, we're about to hit terrain. Of course, we are about to hit terrain, but on purpose, we're landing. Uh, so that's what that radar screen uh, popped up there in the middle was, was telling us. It was kind of annoying. Anyway, we, we stopped the roll out there. Uh, or we roll out and go to parking. This is the last landing of the day. Uh, so it wound up being a pretty simple day. We moved one piece of equipment to from one airport to another, but due to a lot of ground delays, we it was actually turned out to be a kind of a long day, even though it was fairly simple. Uh, so we spent uh, probably eight hours in the plane, all told, um, both you know before takeoff checks, waiting for the uh, release from Guam and then all our ground time and we only logged about a 1.5 hour flight so it's one of those days where you spend a long time with your butt in the seat uh, but but can only log you know an hour and a half of flight time so that, that's that's a little uh, demoralizing the way the Air Force logs it but anyway hope you enjoyed this and uh, stay tuned thanks <laughs>